Alrighty, so um, we're at the stage in this build where we pretty much have all the parts. The only one part that is not 100% accounted for is the nozzle. The reason for that is I don't know if this nozzle will be the right length. This is a drop-in unit for an M249, and I know that the M249 and the PKM have a different hop-up unit. There is a chance they might have a different nozzle length. Um, and I've read on forums that complete drop-in units, um, you know, not like BF2, but I'm talking about entire Polar Star engines, um, there's a specific nozzle length that the PKM uses. So that's the only part not accounted for. If we have to get a longer nozzle or a shorter nozzle, um, that's, that's the only part I think we'd have to order. We have the bull gear insert. This doesn't really mount to the bottom. I thought it would, but it doesn't. This is pretty much it. I mean, it's sturdy. It's not moving around. And all of this on the bottom is the BB reservoir. This looks like a compartment for one to put a battery. You know, you can route your wires through here and do whatever it is uh, you need to do. So that's that. So basically from the stock down that I took this and I drilled a very neat hole into that little cap and that's actually where the macro line is coming from. I left the macro line pretty long because uh, it can be cut and this is very easy to attach and detach so the customer can determine uh, the length that would best suit him. As far as the internal construction goes, we do have the Polar Star F2, which you can see routing out to the magazine, we'll get to that. And we have a bull gear hop-up chamber we got a a lambda barrel um, we got a 509 millimeters it's it was pre r hop from evic i was not too happy with the r hop job uh, so i actually went ahead and i sanded down the patch there's no footage of me doing that if you want to see me do that you should watch the uh, the real sword svd video because uh, I, I do it there and I kind of show how and how I do uh, the buckings and that's pretty much the same way that I do the patches except instead of doing it to the bucking I just do it on the patch. And again the bull gear hop up chamber is a really great touch. We originally used this Prometheus purple bucking but I was having issues with it. I've had issues with these buckings in the past where the lips here uh, were a little bit too wide and the BBs would just fall through. So we just settled with the GNG green bucking. Um, those are really just tried and true. Those have let me down 0% of the time. So basically the, the only issues I want the customer to have to deal with when using this gun is filling their tank, plugging in their battery, and loading BBs. Tank, battery, BBs, should be ready to go. So with that, um, basically the BBs just pour in. So uh, you don't even have to pour it into the main thing. You can pour it in here as well. You know, because there's holes. Because there's holes in there, it will eventually make its way down to the main reservoir. So once that's in, um, I have everything over this notch so that when we close this, like so. And then all he has to do is pop this open and everything is accessible to him right here. So his battery would go in and he can do all of this while it's on the gun, which will be very convenient. So I'm gonna put that on the gun now. Very awkward to do it from this angle. It's easier to do it from like a shooting position. So we have this, we can pull the board out. The unit plugs into the FCU. So you can pull it out and read it if it's like doing anything wacky. You can program it. You can program it to semi-auto. It might make it easier to chrono it. Plug this in. And the battery can just tuck in to the side. Nice and out of the way. Right here I'll show you how you can wind it. So I'll turn the, the uh, potentiometer all the way off. Not getting anything. 
turn it all the way up. See here it winds. Now you can adjust the speed as well. So, it's a nice feature to have. Uh, it, I think the reason is to maybe save like battery consumption. If you don't need all that juice to uh, to feed, but we'll leave that up to you know the, the customer to figure out. Now there's this little thing here for like the dummy rounds. Um, but I still loop this wire on the side. It's braided, so I'm not too worried about the edges of the metal. But this is just really neat, and it allows the cover to stay closed. Less concern of BBs falling out or whatever. And I'm going to take this outside now, and we're going to fine-tune it. So I have everything hooked up. Um, I have my trusty <laughs> torso size target over there. I guess I'll run a chrono test. My chrono is a little bit busted up. But let's see. Let's see what we can get. We're getting like 369, 370. Yeah, 366 to uh, 369. Seems to be the, uh, the range based on those shots. So, we can wind it through here. It'll also automatically wind as you fire it. So I'm gonna shoot at that target over there and just see what kind of, what kind of shots we're gonna be getting out of it. Try to adjust the hop up. You can, really, you can really see the wind just taking these BBs. So yeah, um, I, I did not do any of the fine tuning to it yet, but already, I mean, this thing is really, really accurate. Here's the safety. The safety works just fine. I mean, it fires. It fires, it feeds. It's pretty accurate. Um, the wind does take the BBs though, for sure higher PSI and heavier BBs would help that. Uh, there's the R-hop in here, so you can get some pretty good range out of it. It's feeding consistently. You could field it, you could field it. So the, the M249 F2 will drop in flawlessly to the ANK PKM. Um, and this of course is with the bull gear hop up. I don't know how well it will work with the stock hop up, I imagine it's the same because it should be because it should be to the same spec, but you never know. Um, ANK's ANK stock hop ups are kind of notorious for being shit. But yeah, that's that. <laughs>